This is KTN News. Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. Today on the program, we are speaking to the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Tourism and Wildlife, that is Honorable Najib Balala, who is joining us from his home and will be discussing a lot on how the industry has been coping and what are the solutions moving forward. Such a pleasure to see you, Honorable Najib. Thank you very much. You can see now we have to configure our homes to be yeah. offices as well, so we are struggling all of us. I agree. How are you coping with quarantine so far? Well, uh, it makes us uh, work even much more harder because uh, we are on our toes. Uh, I have a sector that is really been shuttered, but uh, I know I am proactively participating with the sector of how we are going to get a solution together. And we need to be united. The unity of purpose is now to get a solution because otherwise our businesses are going to collapse and government revenues are going to collapse. All right, Najib, uh, let's uh, talk about now how the impact has been for the tourism sector. Of course, we know quite a number of uh, flights cannot come in into the country. We also do know that uh, the hotel facilities, some of them have had to shut down because of uh, low business. Just paint for us the picture. How severe is the situation in Kenya? Well, the tourism industry is 10% uh, of the GDP directly. And now we have evaluated is almost 20% of the GDP because of the linkages to other subsectors. But uh, it generates $1.6 billion and also it employs over 1.6 million people uh, directly. Uh, and this is a major uh, impact by the corona crisis. So most of our facilities, 99% of the facilities are shut. Uh, restaurants, hotels, airlines. And this is the time we have realized tourism cannot work without airlines. So the revival of the aviation sector is crucial and government must look at the industry holistically. So it's not just about bringing tourists into the country, it's how do we bring tourists into the country? How do we make sure that these things work uh, in harmony uh, as, a, as, as a collective sector? So yes, uh, we have learned a lot, but also the challenges are huge because people are out of jobs, uh, businesses have shut, there's no cash flow. So we have been working with the industry and I'm lucky, we are lucky that we were the first sector to consult the industry on the first week of March before even a single case appeared into Kenya. But now we have, uh, we have appreciated the challenge and now we are on the uh, almost uh, 20 plus days on a lockdown or curfew but uh, slowly we, are, we have to open businesses. Uh, I know countries, they are on the 40th day, uh, but slowly they are also opening up. So we are also learning from other countries so that the lessons from there we can implement here. I'm glad uh, this industry has been resilient before, but the magnitude of the effect of this crisis might actually transform the industry. In a way, we need to find a solution, not only rebounds as how we were, but we need to transform of being a better sector than ever imagined. Because the world must travel, but traveling will be cautious in the next two years. Traveling will be comfortable when there is a discovery of the vaccine. And the vaccine will take at least uh, 18 months to two years. So we are, we are concerned, how do we survive in the next two years? So that is our worry. But our, our, our consultation with the industry as well as knowing what is happening, I think uh, the domestic market will recover sooner than later. But again, the mo domestic market needs to be approached differently. We need to appreciate the taste of the domestic market, what type of product do they require. We need to appreciate the domestic market is sensitive in pricing. So we need to change the model of tourism in Kenya. So, also, we know that the domestic market only responds to vacation, mainly on the beach. We need to, again, diversify uh, to the domestic market 
vacation is not only on the beach. The vacation can be also in national parks, in uh, scenery areas, and the northern part, which is a paradise of this country. So, so yes, we need to change the product. We need to change the style. We need to change the, the attitude of our service deliveries. Uh, how do we deliver service to the domestic market? So all this is, 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 is a new norm. So the new norm of the sector must be major. If we think we are going just to recover and be back on our feet, yes. I'm telling you, it's not going to be possible. So we are trying to help the industry also appreciate there'll be a new norm, but what is that new norm? And how do we now fit in the new norm? Those are the things that we are now working hard to make sure that we discover what is the new norm. I know it is too early to discuss about the new norm. It's yeah. still evolving, but at the right time, we'll have the solution to what is the new norm. We hope this crisis goes faster or, or, or earlier than, 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 uh, than the prediction of two years. But uh, we are also cognizant of the reality. And the reality is we must have a vaccine. I can tell you, Abi, uh, uh, airlines will be the critical uh, element to get tourism back on their feet. Because without airlines, we cannot get the numbers to come into our country. That in terms of international visitors. Very salient points you've raised there, Waziri. And uh, of course, uh, I'm really keen to hear from you as well. Many Kenyans perhaps are thinking this is only a Kenyan problem. I know you talk to some of your counterparts in the region from Tanzania, Uganda, South Africa. How is the situation when you talk to other tourism ministers across Africa? Well, uh, this is a global crisis. The entire world has been affected. Uh, so is, if there is any sector that is majorly affected, is tourism and the hospitality sector. Look at the airlines. Most of them have shut down or reduced their, their numbers, but also in the next couple of, year, uh, of months, if the airline industry does not get bailout or yes. the situation does not improve, most of them will go bankruptcy. That's one key. You have seen the cruise line business actually is as good as shut down totally, and it will be for some time. That's another chance. So the impact in Africa is the same. Uh, okay, Africa does not have much tourism. It's only 2% uh, of the global tourism, which is sad, but still it's an opportunity where we can bring tourism and get employment for our people. But this is where uh, the world must know. Africa is where there is nature tourism. Yeah, so this is the place they should come next. I have had discussion with African Union colleagues from uh, different parts of the continent of Africa. Remember, I'm the chairman of the World, uh, World, World Tourism Organization of the UN, and I have chaired several crisis meetings uh, globally as well. So we appreciate the continent of Africa is going to change. And probably this is the time the continent of Africa should think about inter-Africa tourism. We need to, 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 to remove the bureaucracy in terms of visa, re, uh, visa regime or, or, or labor or, 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 or people going from one country to another in Africa. We need to improve infrastructure, which is rail and road and air. We need to make sure that the air connectivity is affordable and it is also uh, effective or timely. They keep time. So all this, but these are major investments. If we start the investment now, as a vision, I think in five years' time, these investments will be ready, as well as it will now improve on the tourism for the continent of Africa. Interesting. And uh, CS, uh, I also want to just pick your mind. Uh, you, you, of course, uh, are leading a very interesting ministry that uh, I cannot but sympathize with the situation right now. Hotels having to ask employees to take unpaid leave, some asking for uh, matters to do with uh, pay cuts. And uh, as an industry, do we have a recovery plan? Because at the end of it all, we do hope that this coronavirus is a passing cloud and uh, eventually things will bounce back. But as a tourism industry, what is the roadmap to take us back to where we were and receiving almost over 2 million visitors per year? Well, definitely we must have a recovery plan. The recovery plan I've discussed with the, with the, with the industry and we have a whole raft of issues to discuss within government. So the recovery plan has been presented to the government. 
it, it, it varies from cash flow issues. It varies from a revolving fund, a recovery fund. It varies about how do we defer taxes. It varies about technology, marketing, name it. So there's a whole raft of recovery plan that I have forwarded on behalf of the sector to, uh, to, to the government. But also within government, we have to be also rush, uh, rationalizing those issues and also be pragmatic of what we can afford and what we cannot afford. Yeah, I know it is tough. It's not easy. But I have had a meeting with the hotel association and they told me that in the next three months, things like uh, going on leave and, uh, and, and, and deferred leave also, is one strategy. Then all of us are taking pay cuts. Mm. All of us in the, in the country, including myself, have taken a pay cut to support the COVID fund. So all of us need to be also uh, forward, uh, for, uh, coming forward to say, this is my sacrifice. I know it's painful for me, but this is my sacrifice. That is the spirit we need to work together. But I can tell you, we will recover. We will come back as a sector. The COVID COVID crisis must be a passing cloud. It's going to be a bit dragged a bit, but it will be a passing cloud. We have seen crises like this, and luckily tourism in Kenya and in Africa. We have been resilient because we have gone through many challenges. The Al-Shabaab crisis, the bombing, the insecurity, the travel advisories. But today, it is unprecedented crisis. And we need to have that unity of purpose and say, what is our solution? I believe wherever there is a crisis, there is an opportunity. And this is the opportunity we need to transform the hospitality industry, the aviation industry, the conservation and wildlife industry sector. All those needs to come together and say, we need to have a new restart. So to reset the sector is crucial. Without resetting it, we might miss the opportunity when the world opens, because there will be a new norm, a new traveler, new behaviors, and those behaviors are going to be very weird and very demanding. For example, the, 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 the emergency crisis or uh, measures that we have put in, uh, by, uh, I mean, uh, prescribed by the Ministry of Health, of lockdown, of hygiene, all these measures are good for us. But the world is watching. Who is abiding with the World Health Organization measures? And are the countries like Kenya, doing the right things or the bad things. Then when they start opening and they start traveling, they'll have confidence that Kenya has the capacity and Kenya has the capacity to make sure the visitors are safer. You remember last week, there was an announcement from Russia saying they will not allow their, their, their citizens to travel internationally for the next six months. Germany did the same. European Union did the same. Spain did the same. So everybody, will want to safeguard their citizens from not traveling because they, were, they are worried the second wave of the, the, the spread of the virus. So they don't want a country that will, uh, will, will receive visitors to be the country that spreads the virus. That's why we are taking these stringent measures. And thank you. I congratulate my colleague, Minister uh, uh, Kagwe, because he's just been very clear on it. We Kenyans must see this is not a government agenda. This is our own health agenda. We must protect it. And we must protect our country because there is the future we want to count on. And these measures are important. Without prescribing to these measures, we will not be 